Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, all possible full binary trees. This is a pretty challenging problem for a medium because it's definitely different than a lot of tree questions you might, uh, because it's definitely different than a lot of tree questions that you've probably already solved before. We're given an integer n and our job is just to return all possible full binary trees we can make with n nodes. Uh, so we actually need to build these trees. Now the default value for every single node we can assign is just give it a default value of zero. So when we return a list, each, li each element in the list should be the root node of the possible tree. The good thing is we can return the trees in any order that we choose. So uh, this problem it is gonna mainly gonna be about brute forcing this problem. Now you can actually optimize it and I'll show you the optimization we can do to the brute force solution in the code because I think it'll be easier. But it's one of those optimizations that might not always be allowed. So in a real interview, I would probably check with your interviewer. Uh, it depends on, you know, when they say return a list of trees as you can see below these are some possible trees we could create does each tree node the node of every single tree does it need to be distinct like does it need to be a brand new node like a deep copy or is it possible that we could take you know this subtree of three nodes and then place that exact same uh, subtree over here to save us a little bit of time so basically creating a shallow copy right like meaning that these two trees are actually the exact same they just have a different root node suppose right so that's kind of what the optimization hinges on uh, but I won't get into that now so right now let's focus on actually solving this problem now you do need to understand what exactly is a full binary tree they give us the definition here basically every single node in the tree either has to have exactly zero children or two children so suppose in this first example, we're given n equals seven, right? We can see that there are five different trees that we could create with seven nodes. Now, how can we actually do this? Like even just focusing on the brute force, how are we gonna do this? Well, every tree starts with a root, right? So we have seven nodes that we can choose. On the right, let's just say, okay, uh, you know, here we're gonna put our first node. It, you know, the value is always gonna be zero. So now we really have n equals six nodes remaining. So now the question is, how are we going to brute force this, right? How, we're going to look at every single combination, right? So how do we even do that? Well, we have six nodes remaining. We could decide to put zero nodes on in the left subtree, right? Zero nodes at all. And we could put all six of the remaining nodes in the right subtree and see you know, how many different uh, tr valid full trees does this lead us to, right? It, maybe it's impossible to even make a tree like this. And based on the, the solution on the left, you can see, yeah, it is impossible. Do any of these trees have a uh, empty left subtree? No, they do not. And the reason is if, you know, by definition, that won't be a full binary tree because every node such as this node has to either have two children uh, you know, a left and right child or has to have no left and no right child, right? So if we have zero nodes on the left and we have even a single node on the right, then it becomes invalid. So by noticing a pattern like the one I just mentioned, we're trying to be smart and trying to see if maybe we can save some time and maybe we don't actually have to brute force this problem. And maybe you can come up with one. I don't really know a way that we can do that. So unfortunately, any pattern we recognize isn't really gonna help us. So we are still gonna just have to brute force it. So I would the recommendation I would give you for this problem is don't try to be smart, just try to uh, figure out how you can solve it at all. What we noticed though is to brute force it, we could go through every combination. So we could either have zero nodes on the left and six on the right, or we could put one node on the left, five nodes on the right, or we could put two on the left, four on the right, and et cetera, et cetera, right? Basically every combination we could put one, or we could put zero through six nodes on the left side, and then to calculate how many nodes we're gonna put on the right side is basically just gonna be N minus L, where L is the number of nodes on the left, right? So this is what is gonna be R, which is the number of nodes on the right. We're gonna have to do a entire loop to actually determine that. 
But the good thing about this solution is it's pretty recursive. Hopefully you can recognize that, right? Because initially we had the problem of n equals seven, right? Then we put one node uh, as the root node, and then we have the new problem n equals six, right? So and then if we say, okay, let's put two on the left, four on the right, right? This four is a new sub problem, right? Now we're trying to calculate how many different trees can we make, uh, full trees can we make with four nodes? And of course, we're going to end up getting down to some base cases, right? If n equals zero, then, you know, that's an empty tree. So I guess we can just return an empty tree, right? We can just return null uh, as the return value in this case. What if we had n equals one? That's also a pretty simple base case, right? We could just return a single node with a value of zero. And, you know, just continuing, if n equals 2, it's not even possible, right? Then in that case, we'd have to return null or, uh, you know, since we're returning a list of trees, if we were given 2, we would return an empty list because there's no possible full binary trees we can make with two nodes, right? If we take one node as the root node, then we either have to put a node on the left or put a node on the right. In both cases, you know, the, the node won't have two children and it won't have zero children, so it won't be a valid tree. So that's really enough for us to solve this problem. One thing I will mention that, you know, since this is a recursive problem, every time we compute the sub problem, right, if we computed how many trees can we make with four nodes, we could cache that, right? We could put it in some kind of uh, hash map cache. And then, you know, if we were recomputing that same sub problem, then we could just, you know, have that list of trees stored for us, and then we could return that instantly. This will speed things up, but it still won't be an efficient solution. It will still be somewhat brute forcing. And the real time complexity of even this caching solution is gonna be two to the power of n. Now, I don't completely understand how uh, you can get to this time complexity because apparently from the leak code solution section, there's quite a lot of math involved. So I don't know if it would be super important to prove this is the time complexity in an interview. So I won't go into detail on that. Okay, so now let's write the code. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be uh, brute forcing this recursively. I'm gonna call it backtracking. Uh, you can call it DFS or whatever you want. And I'm gonna put the function inside of the function just because that's how I'm used to doing it but you know you could declare this function outside if your interviewer would prefer that you can definitely do that as well now remember the two base cases we had so if n equals zero we just want to return null now what this function is going to do is it's going to return the list of full binary trees fbt's with n nodes where n is the input parameter right so if n equals zero we can just return an empty list if n equals one we can return a list with a single node we can create a tree node uh, with the constructor an empty constructor will have a default value of zero as defined up above so that's good for us. Now we actually want to return it. Don't let me forget to write that. Otherwise, we're going to continue with the brute force. Now the result, remember, is a list of trees. So let's define that result. And now let's actually build it. So remember, uh, we're just brute forcing it. So we're given n nodes. One of the nodes is going to be used on the root node of the tree, and then we're gonna be left with n minus one nodes. Uh, in Python though, if we, let's say, iterate through L, uh, meaning the number of nodes in the left subtree in range n, uh, what this does in Python is it will iterate through you know, zero through n minus one nodes. So this will just do what we already want it to do, right? It'll go through zero through n minus one because one of the nodes was taken up with the root node. So that's the all possible combinations we can have for the number of nodes in the left tree. Now to calculate how many we'll have in the right tree, we can just do r equals n minus one minus uh, the number of nodes in the left tree, right? Pretty simple math. And now we're actually gonna be running the uh, backtracking the recursive part, right? So we'll have L is going to be the number of nodes in the left uh, subtree. So how many possibilities can we get? So we're going to pass in L for backtracking, right? This will return all possible a list of all possible trees we can have. And we're, we want to do the same with the right. So we'll call backtrack on right. This will also, you know, return that list of trees. So we can say left trees and right trees is equal to the result of these two function calls. Suppose the left tree list has two uh, trees, right, T1, T2, and suppose the right list has uh, some trees as well, T3, T4, 
Uh, you know, and we also have a root node, right? So the question is, how? What are all possible full binary trees we can make? So if we have a root node, one possibility would be that the root node would have a left child of T1 and a right child of T3, or it could have a left child of T1 and a right child of T4, or it could have a left child of T1, a right child of T3, or a left child of T2 and a right child of T4, right? Basically what we're doing is going through all combinations of these two lists. By these two lists, I mean the lists of possible trees in the left uh, subtree and the list of possible trees on the right subtree. So since we're just going through all combinations, an easy way to do that is just a nested for loop on these two lists that we're given. So let's say T1 is all possible trees in the uh, left uh, subtree and as another nested loop, T2 is for the right subtree. And each time we do this, we're gonna create a new, a new root node, right? A new tree node. Uh, the value is gonna be zero, the first parameter. The second one is the left subtree, which is T1. And the, the third one is the right subtree, which is T2. So we're creating a new tree, a new full binary tree with N nodes, right? That's what this entire function was all about. So now that we've created this, what do we want to do? We want to append it to our result variable because that's what we're ultimately going to be returning. So we can, cre we can return this new uh, full binary tree. And then, you know, it's, this is really the entire function. This is the bulk of it. And then once we're done with that, we can go ahead and return that result variable. And then to solve this problem, we can just call our backtracking function on the input uh, value n and then return the result of that. Now, as you remember, I did mention that we can uh, you know, optimize this problem a little bit with caching. So let's do that. Let's first define our cache up above. I'm just gonna call it DP because it's short. This DP will map an integer value n to the list of full binary trees that we can create with n nodes. So, you know, these are two base cases. Another base case is going to be if n has already been computed. So if n is in DP, then we can return uh, the result that was already computed. And if it hasn't already been cached, then we'll compute that result and then cache it uh, at the end. So we can cache it before we return, just like this. DP of n is going to be equal to a result. So once we've computed it, then we will cache it so that we then next time we want to compute it, we can instantly return that. Now, a slightly uh, more efficient way to do this, we can see that these two base cases can actually just be uh, thrown into our cache if we want to, uh, you know, save a few lines of code. So that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, you know, the one base case is with zero nodes, we can create an empty list. We don't, we can't create any full binary trees. And with one, we can create a single uh, full binary tree with just a single node. So that's what we'll put in our cache, right? Now we could even add a couple more base cases if we really want to, right? Two is also gonna return an empty list, but I won't do that just because it's not really necessary in this case. So with all that said, let's finally run the code and make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it is pretty efficient. Uh, even though the time complexity is two to the power of n. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you'd like. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.